Hello, in this presentation, we will record an adjusting entry related to depreciation on equipment within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been following along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that's okay. We will be recording adjusting journal entries related to depreciation, discussing what they are, how to record them, and why to record them. If you have the backup file to this point, you could restore that at the file and restore. We currently have the open windows open here to open that view and open windows list. We also have the company home tab open at company and home page. At this point, we will be recording the adjusting entry for depreciation. That being the entry needed in order to decline the value or reduce the value of depreciation to take a look at that we're going to look at our reports so let's go to reports up top let's go down to company and financial we're going to scroll down to the balance sheet first and we will then select the date range and i'm going to go up here to customize reports and have the date range of 01012120 022821 January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021, and OK. So here is our report. We are concentrating on this 103,000 in equipment. If we double click on that, there are a couple items that we have within uh, the equipment section. And what we would need to do here is determine what the life of these equipments are and how are we going to depreciate the, this equipment over time. In other words, when we buy the equipment, we typically will pay for it or put it on credit or finance it. And then instead of putting it on the books as an expense, we put it on the balance sheet as an asset. And the difference is something that if it's an asset, it's something that's gonna help us generate revenue in the future. That's why we have it. We're in essence investing in the equipment to help generate revenue in the future. We haven't yet consumed it. We haven't yet used it in order to help us generate revenue. That's what we hope to do in the future. As we do so, we should write off the cost when we do so. If we close this back out, so that's that 103. If we go to the income statement or the profit and loss, go into reports, go into company and financial and the profit and loss for 0101.28 uh, to 0228, uh, 21. Hold on a second. Should go to 0101 21 to 0228 21. So January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021 is the period that we are working in. And note that we do not have, of course, that expense here. Now, remember, we paid for 103,000 uh, during the, the, the first couple months here in the format of either cash that we paid or financing. And therefore, you would think maybe that we should be putting that 103 on the income statement because we actually bought it. But at this point, if we did that, note what would happen. We'd have a $100,000 loss here. And that's not really accurate because really that equipment is on the books as an asset. If we close the company, we could sell it and still get some value back from it. And that's why we're going to put it on the books as an asset. And then we're going to depreciate it over time. So it is the case that we should have some expense related to those assets but it should be related to the part of the asset that we actually consumed in order to help us generate this revenue in accordance with the matching principle. So that's what we're going to try to do here. We're going to try to take, going back to the balance sheet, this 103000 and allocate the amount of use that we got out of it in this time period uh, in order to help generate revenue, thereby matching the expense related to the cost of this asset, to these assets, to the... Um, time period in which they helped us generate revenue and reducing this furniture and fixture account. You would think by doing that we would have an expense called furniture and fixture expense and we would be just reducing this account directly. But because this is an estimate then what we're going to do is we're going to create another account called accumulated depreciation and that'll tell the reader look this is what we bought it for and now we think it went down in value by the accumulated depreciation. So the book value will be the difference on the balance sheet. And then the income statement account that's going to be an expense will not be furniture and equipment expense. Rather, it will be depreciation expense. So that's what depreciation is uh, in essence. We're going to do a quick calculation. That, and in real life, we'd have to take those pieces of equipment 
and depreciate each of them in a depreciation schedule, often something that is going to be done by an outside CPA firm to help out. Uh, it's possibly that we keep the depreciation schedules on different types of schedules, depending on how we're going to run the depreciation process, uh, because we could have a different depreciation schedules for the books versus the tax code, or we might just want to follow the tax code. That might make it easier. But let's just do a quick calculation to get an idea of what we're doing here. We're going to take this 103,000 and we're going to apply a kind of straight line depreciation. Uh, if you are to do that, get some advice on wh what the useful life is going to be and what the depreciation calculation should be. But this is going to be the concept here. We're going to take the 103,000. We're going to assume that at the end of its useful life, the useful life in our example is going to be 10 years. At the end of 10 years, after we've used up this equipment and consumed it all and it's no longer useful to us, we think that we can still scrap it for the metal or whatever parts within the equipment for 10,000. So we're going to take that 103,000 minus 10,000. And that's going to give us 93,000 that we're going to depreciate over the useful life, which we're estimating to be 10 years. We believe we're going to have this thing for 10 years. It's going to help us generate revenue for 10 years. At the end of that 10 year time, we can still sell it for the scrap. They call it scrap 10,000. And therefore, we have to depreciate 93,000 over that 10 year time period. So the straight line method would just be would divide that by 10 years. And that would give us 9,300. We're going to depreciate this time just one month's worth, however. So if we take that and divide it by 12, we're going to depreciate 775 this month. And so the entry to do that would be a debit to depreciation expense, reducing our net income. And we're going to make a new account, which we're going to credit, which is going to be a contra account, and it's going to be called accumulated depreciation. So let's take a look at that. If we were to do that, normally we would go to the company and we would go to make journal entries and we would debit depreciation expense, increasing the expense and credit accumulated depreciation. However, we're going to do this without journal entries and we're going to try to do this with just uh, registers. There are only two accounts involved. One is going to be accumulated depreciation, one depreciation expense. We can't go to the expense register because there is not one. And therefore, we're going to have to find the accumulated depreciation register. You can't see that one here, that that account is here because it currently has nothing in it. But it is in our lists. If we go to the lists and we go to chart of accounts and we go to the fixed asset, we have this accumulated depreciation. This account we didn't generate. We, it was generated by QuickBooks when we set up the company, just about any company will typically have it if you choose uh, whatever account type you have. In other words, we chose, in this case, the merchandising company when we set up QuickBooks. QuickBooks then gave us a set of accounts, including this account of uh, furniture equipment and the related accumulated depreciation. So what we're going to do is go to the register. And I'm going to do that by going to Banking, Use Register, and then scroll down to that uh, accumulated depreciation register and then select that item. Here is the register. Nothing's in it at, of, at this time. We're gonna make our transaction as of 02-28-21, the end of the month that we are working on. Now these registers are actually more tricky than putting in journal entries if we understand debits and credits. But if we don't understand debits and credits, we can work with these things and use some trial and error to figure this out. And there's only two accounts to this transaction, so uh, we can try to see which way this thing's gonna go. Now we're looking at this account of accumulated depreciation. It's a contra asset account. You would think it would be increasing, but I think QuickBooks is saying that it's because it's a type of asset, because it's connected to the furniture and fixture, um, then it's going to be a decrease to the total asset account. So it's actually in the decrease column. And that's something you would have to just use some trial and error, which I have done <laughs> in order to know that that's the case. So we're going to record that and see if it does what we want it to do. So I'm going to put in the 775 here and then we're going to go to the other side of this, which is just going to go to depreciation expense. So if we select the drop down and we go down, we see depreciation expense is going to be down in the expense area. Another account we didn't set up. However, it is an account that typically almost all types of accounts within QuickBooks will set up if we choose to use their setup options. So we're going to put in depreciation expense, type that in here. There it is. It is an expense tab. There will be our journal entry. Only two accounts are affected. We are, are using the register for accumulated depreciation. 
the other account going to depreciation expense. We're going to record this and see if, if it does what we hope it to do. What do we hope it to do? We hope that it will decrease total assets and we hope that the expense will be going up in the expense debit direction, decreasing net income. Let's check it out. So we'll close this out. And it's kind of funny that uh, if we look into the fixed assets section, we've got this new account now, accumulated depreciation, now that it has a balance and it's above the furniture and fixture. Typically, that's not the way it would be. Why is QuickBooks putting it that way? Because both these accounts are in the same account type and it then it's in alphabetical order from there. So in order to kind of fix that, it would be more proper. We'd have to use account numbers in order to fix that, but that's a bit more of a complication. So we're just going to deal with the fact that it's a little reversed here. This is the account that we would have here. We can also make this, by the way, a subsidiary account, and that's another way we can we could deal with that. But it's okay. We're going to put this is the main account, the 103000 and this is the depreciation therefore what we are saying here is that our reader we're telling our reader we bought this equipment for 103,000 and we think that it has depreciated for this time period the first month of 775 and therefore the book value is uh 102 225 that's how much we still have current that we're going to use we're going to consume it through use uh over the next uh in this case nine and eleven nine years and eleven months and if we look at the other side of this we go to the profit and loss and we scroll down we should have depreciation expense it is an expense increasing the expenses and the expenses then will decrease net income so we're now currently at a loss we have this other expense of 775 related to the depreciation